Welcome to the video. This video is a direct result of a subscriber request and it was specifically how you set up your radio, the Tyrannus, with things like flight controllers to make sure that the middle channel value is 1500 and then the outer values of the channel don't go below 1000 and above 2000. Let's very quickly have a look at why that might be the case. So here we have a standard channel. We'll just look at the aileron for the purposes of the demo here. And we have the standard range that you would consider to be normal. And this, again, there are some radios out there where the, the middle value is actually 1520, but a lot of flight controllers will assume that the 1500 microsecond pulse which is the width of the pulse that's, that's coming to the flight controller is gonna be 1500 microseconds. Anything between 1500 microseconds down to 1000 microseconds is considered a control input of one direction and anything from 1500 microseconds up to 2000 microseconds is considered an input in the other direction. So if we overlay that, then the way it works is that if the flight controller can see 1500 on whatever control you're looking at, that, for things like the rudder, aileron, elevator, is considered to be no movement at all, where if it's nearly 2,000, it's full movement in right direction, and then if it's near 1,000, it's full movement in the other direction. So if we just kind of overlay that, so here we have our aileron control, and it's right in the very middle. If that is sending 1500 microseconds to the flight controller, the flight controller will see that as you not wanting to go in any direction or change the attitude of the craft at all. If you push the stick over to the left hand side and that value drops towards 1000 microseconds, like in this case it's 1065 just to pluck a number out of the air, then the flight controller will say, oh, right, okay, you want to go that in direction really quickly because we're nearly down to the lowest value of 1,000 microseconds. Similarly, then if you push it all the way to the right, it goes all the way up to 1,943 microseconds. Again, just a number plucked out of the air. Then the flight controller says, oh, blimey, right, okay, that's nearly right up against the 2,000 maximum value. It, they really want to go in that direction really badly as well. I better do something about that. So the way it works is that when you're setting up your flight controller with your radio, you want to be aiming to have the middle stick value being 1,500 microseconds, and then you want to aim to have the upper and lower limits of things like the elevator, aileron, and rudder to be close, but not go over or below 1,000 to 2,000. So I typically say something like, you know, from 1,020 up to 1,980 is a nice big range and it'll give you lots of resolution. So let's have a quick look on the radio and have a look how we're setting this up. As it happens, the subscriber has asked just at the time when I'm swapping one of my models to use a Tyrannus receiver. So we've got an X8R in a Quantum Nova Pro and we're going to use that for the demo. So here on the screen, let's just jump into initial setup into mandatory hardware and let's have a look at radio calibration. Now here hopefully you can see on the screen that the roll which is aileron is settled at it's 1499 1501 it's, it's hunting around a little bit but it's basically bang on 1500. The pitch is the same which is elevator your which is rudder is about the same as well and if I move the roll which is aileron all the way to the left then it goes down to about 110, all the way to the right, it goes up to about 1996. So that gives me a good, nice range. Doesn't go over 2000 or below 1000, because some flight controllers don't like that. And some flight controllers also assume that anything significantly below 1000 for things like the throttle means that something terrible has happened. So let's have a look on the radio and I'll show you what I've been doing. So we're gonna press menu and then page. And we're going to go through until we get to the servos. So here on the outputs, here are all the important numbers where we're going to have a play with this stuff. And you can change anything. So at the moment, this is all set up and how I've configured it. What I've done is I've used the sub trim. So for example, let's look at um, aileron. I, for just shorthand, I just put aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder so I can track it. Let's look at aileron, which if we look on the screen is this one up here. As I move the aileron around, you can see the value at the top in microseconds is changing. So it goes all the way up to 1991, although the APM that we're looking at in Mission Planner reads it as 1996. And then in the other direction, 
it's reading 1009, but the APM is reading it as 1011. And that's just because the way the timing circuit works, it isn't absolutely spot on accurate. But this is how we can play with this. So to change this, I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna go into then select this value here. This is actually the sub trim. So this is the number that we're gonna to change to affect where that middle position is. Now the radio thinks that middle position should be read as about 1497, 96 microseconds. Here we can see it's read as 1501. If I hit enter and start to change that number on the radio, you'll see it changing here on the screen. Now this could be the same for clean fly, it could be for whatever program you're running. So we're just gonna change this number until the number on the screen reads 1500 or as close as we can get it. I'd say that's pretty close. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter for that. And then the min and max values, if I go all the way across on the stick, you can see now that it reads 1011, 1012 is the lowest value. Now watch what happens if I just go into this and I turn this back up to 100%, you'll notice if I go to the left hand stick, it actually goes down to 991, that's outside that normal range of 1000 to 2000. A lot of flight controllers really don't like that. So what I tend to do is I tend to edit that and then let me just hold the stick to the left hand side while I increase that or decrease it should I say down to 96 I find a good value and there we've got that value again hit enter on the other side which is the maximum throw again I've done the same thing if we just edit that if I put the stick all the way over to the right hand side as I reduce and change that number you can see that number increasing and decreasing as well. I just try and keep them all the same here because it just means easier. So that's how you do it. This is the screen you want to play with. So use this number here for whichever channel the control is on to make sure that you get on the screen to as close to 1500 as you possibly can then use the min and max numbers to make sure that the channel values go in between 1000 and 2000 and don't go over. And that way your flight controller should be a lot happier. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.